I'm Greg Muffet. I'm a criminal profiler, an author, college professor, and a psychologist. But when it's hunting season, I'm in the woods as much as I can be. Welcome to Southern Hunter. Welcome back to Southern Hunter. Where we were last time is we walked the property and boy it was a hot and muggy day but it was really exciting. We got plenty sweaty but had a good time. So I talked to my broker and where we are right now is we're at the point where we either need to make an offer or um, move on and look for some other property. It's really nerve-wracking because uh, any kind of a financial risk like this is uh, is scary but it's also very exciting of, of possibilities and the future so what I need to do now is I want to talk to some people that I trust uh, who are wise and help me make decisions in life uh, I want to talk to my broker one more time about a couple of odds and ends and of course I want to talk to my wife and make sure that she and I are on the same page and if we go forward it won't be a, a team effort so here we go Took a long car trip just this past week with my wife and it gave us a lot of opportunity to talk about this property and what we wanted, what we didn't, to talk about our concerns and our worries and uh, make sure that we're moving forward in a wise way. Um, I, I want to make sure that my wife is totally in on this deal with me. Even though she's not a hunter, I'm hoping that she'll be able to benefit from this property in the way that it will benefit our family in the long run. So if you're a good husband, you're a good listener, and you're listening to what's not said. So as we talked, I tried to make sure I was listening for any hesitation because I don't want to push my wishes on her. So at the end of the day, I think we're on the same page. I think we're both uh, excited about this property. It's also very scary uh, thinking about a big risk. We've had no debt for uh, many years now, and going into debt again is kind of a nerve-wracking thing. but. Uh, but I'm willing to do it for a couple of reasons. This has been a dream of mine uh, as long as I can remember. And what's been really interesting is every one of my hunter friends, as I've told them what I'm doing, every single one of them has said, oh my gosh, that's my dream. So I'm living that dream. If something happens and we're not uh, able to keep this property, we can sell it, we can get our money back as long as I stay within my cap. Uh, so no harm, no foul. So that's where we are, and I think we're ready to move forward. We will stay within our cap. As I said before, if this doesn't work out, there's more property out there and we'll keep looking. One more thing I want to point out before we go forward today, I want to thank one of our sponsors, PSE Archery. As you know, I shoot a PSE bow. I love that bow. It's the best bow I've ever had. Uh, I take it in the woods every time I go, and if something ever happened and I needed to replace it, I would go with PSE again. So we want to thank PSE for their sponsorship of this, uh, this program, and let's get going on making an offer on this property. It's time for the Southern Hunter tip of the day. You probably noticed that I'm out of uniform, and there's a good reason for that. It's time for me to exercise. Every day, I either run, bike, swim, power walk, and once a week I even do yoga with my wife. I want to make sure that my muscles stay toned, my heart stays strong, and that I can do anything that I need to do out in the woods. What we don't want to happen is to invest a lot of time into developing this hunting property, get it to where we want it, and then not be able to enjoy it because I'm in bad health. So I want a strong heart and a strong body. I look forward to the day when my grandchildren will be shooting their first deer on my hunting property. And the way I can do that is to make sure I eat right, sleep right, and get plenty of exercise. So let's go for a bike ride. So I just got back from about 15 mile bike ride. It is hot, hot, hot. But every time I'm sweating and tired, pumping uphill, 
wishing I was sitting by the pool. I remember, for one thing, I'm glad I'm healthy enough that I can do this. It's great to be healthy enough to go out and sweat. And secondly, I know most people my age can't do what I do. And the reason they can't is because they give up. And I'm not giving up. I'm going to be riding my bike and running when I'm 65 years old. So it's time to go in, get some cold to drink, jump in the pool. I'm sitting at home with Powerade on the back porch. It's been a hot day. i uh, been out in the woods a little bit. But it's nice to be out of the bugs and in the shade. But that wasn't the case a couple of days ago. I took another, another trip back to the property. I wanted to look at a couple of things. And did I have some issues? First thing, I lost my tripod. I had it in my backpack somewhere along the way, fell out, couldn't find it. So one of these days, if I buy this property, I'll probably stumble over it, uh, stomping around in the woods. Next thing, remember that bridge we saw? Boy, did I take a tumble. I hit that bridge and my feet went out from under me and I landed square on my hip. Ouch. I've been limping for several days now. Not only that, my camera ended up in that creek. Fortunately, I think it's okay. Then, the top end of the property, I was climbing over that gate, and it appears I wasn't the only one wanting to use that gate. So, I was climbing over the gate, and it seems that some wasps had built a nest up inside the tubular uh, framing, and they didn't like it. And I bent down to pick up my drone, and I got hammered. And man, first I thought I got snake bit, but nope. Wasps, thank goodness. Wasps better than snakes. Wasps are better than hornets or yellow jackets too, so I can live with it. So, my hand has recovered a little bit. Uh, that bruise on my hip is starting to turn yellow. I'm starting to walk a little better, but <laughs> boy did it hurt. But you know what? Even with injuries like that, we always want to be careful, but it's worth it. I love the woods, and I know you do too. I did a lot of talking with my wife over the weekend about what to do about this piece of property. We really like it. It's got everything on my must-have list, and it's got almost everything on my would-like-to-have list that we did in the first episode. I really don't think that we're going to do much better, especially in the price range that I think we can get this for. Ceiling prices for property around here without structures on them, uh, hunting properties that is, run around the $5,000 acre or $5,000 an acre mark. On the low ball end about $2,000 an acre. So we decided to give a low ball bid and see what the owner does with it. I suspect they're going to come back and counter with a little bit higher, which is not unusual, but I'm going to stick with my ceiling price and my uh, agent knows what that is. If we can't get it, we can't and we'll move on. If we do get it for what we want, we'll get a real bargain. We're going to pay for this property about half over the next 10 years just on trees on the property. So I feel really good about it. Uh, we made the offer to the agent. The ball will be in the hands of the owner for the next few days. We put a deadline of uh, next Wednesday, which is about five days away, for them to respond to us. So in the next five days, I should be able to tell you something. So I just got off the phone with my broker and I'm out in the woods. Boy, it's crunchy, hard, dry out here. Unbelievable, just a few weeks ago it was soaking wet. And anyway, got some good news and some bad news. We made an offer, and while we were waiting on the offer to be either accepted or countered, um, they found a problem in the land survey. So it looks like the property is actually about two and a half acres bigger than what we thought. So that's good. Um, but that has to be resolved before they can do the counter offer. So we're gonna be in limbo for a little bit, um, but that's exciting. Um, I don't know where that two acres is. Uh, as soon as we get a survey, we'll find out. Um, I don't know if it's north, south, east, or west, but um, yeah, we'll find out. So anyway, good news from the broker. He also said that the uh, sellers were really excited about the offer, and even though we lowballed them a little bit, we're certainly not out of the uh, out of the ballpark and they think that we're going to be able to make a deal on this so that's where we stand. I got another quick call from the broker the other day. Um, as you know the property has been uh, reassessed and there's a two acre track it appears that 
going back into the 1800s actually belonged to this hundred and some acres and yet it's been uh, farmed by somebody else who thought they owned it. So in this process they discovered it actually belongs to us. So it's being reassessed. Um, and one of the things that I saw as we went down the road that goes through the property is right at the end of the road there is a little old house that's falling apart. It's full of junk in the front and it's kind of a mess. Uh, but it's right at the end of the road, right before the railroad tracks. So it appears that it's possible that that two-acre track might include that little house. If that house is included, if it's structurally sound in some ways, I may be able to have a cabin already underway, even though it would be worthless as a house to remodel to live in. For a hunting cabin, it might be really nice. So I wanted to take another real quick trip out there and take a look at it. Uh, and here's what I found. It's very overgrown. Concrete walls. Window frames, but no windows. Alright, lots of junk. Floor is collapsed in here. Which means the rest of this floor is probably going to go. Well, it looks like this. it's a block building a deck that is in terrible shape. I don't even want to walk on that. But it's a block building that's got some structure we could work with. Now that I've had a chance to look at that cabin again, I kind of had some mixed feelings about it. On the one hand, it's exciting that there's a structure there that's got me going for a potential cabin in the future if I end up with this property. But on the other hand, it's going to take a ton of work. Um, I'm not afraid of hard work. I can build anything. I built my own house. I cut down the first tree with a chainsaw and put the last nail in the roof. I built my own swimming pool. I built my own barn. I can work on my own cars. So I'm not afraid of the work. But what I don't want is the property to own me instead of me owning it. So I don't want to spend all my time down there working on this cabin rather than hunting. Some of my friends who own beach property, for example, they spend about one or two weekends every month or so going down not to enjoy the beach, but to work on their property, and that just doesn't sound like fun to me. So I want to make sure if I get this that it doesn't take up more time uh, doing stuff that I don't enjoy uh, rather than uh, being something that brings me some fulfillment. So I know I'm going to need windows, I'm going to need doors, I'm going to redo the floor, I'm going to have to get rid of all that junk that's there. Uh, so I'm not paying any extra money even though this extra acreage is being added to the plat. Now there's some uh, more stuff that we have to think about when we think about owning a property like this. For one thing, this property is mine to maintain. I'm not going to have my buddies anymore that are going to help me cut trails or put out Roundup or do food plots. It's all on me. That also means that I'm going to need some equipment to maintain this property. So, I'm wrestling with the idea of buying or hiring tractor work. I have a tractor right now, but it's just not big enough for a property this size. I can hire a guy with a bush hog to come out for $450, $500 or so, show him where I want, let him uh, run the mark trails, and I'll be done, and do that once or twice a year, and I'll be good to go. On the other hand, if I have my own tractor, I can bush hog any time I want. I can do any other work that I need to do on the property. And over time, I think that tractor would pay for itself. So I have to think about what size tractor I want, how much money I want to spend. I've done some looking, and I can find that I can get uh, John Deere or Mahindra or uh, Kubota or something like that under $10,000 with a bush hog and maybe a disc attachment so I can do some of my food plots. So that's the direction I'm leaning. But for right now, I think I'll probably go through the first season and just hire somebody. And then once I get to know the property, I'll know what I need. Now there's one other thing that I'll need to do. The uh, property needs to be burned. Um, all of the underbrush in those pines need to be burned off and the forestry department will do that for you. It's free, but you have to schedule it. So that's got to be high on my priority list if we end up with this property as well. So there's lots of work to do.
So from this point, I'm going to call my broker. I'm going to bounce some ideas off of him and get his opinion on a couple of things, and we'll see where we go from there. It's been about three weeks since we put the offer on the land. Originally, we had a five-day terminus on the contract, but with the discovery of the discrepancy in the acreage, uh, they had to do a new survey, so it's taking a while. But I'm not discouraged. Um, it's a buyer's market. I've got plenty of time. If this property doesn't work out, I can find something else. So to keep from getting too tied up in this property, sitting around thinking about all the things I'll do with it and being uh, running the risk of maybe uh, pushing my ceiling cap on uh, how much I'll pay, I've decided to expand my search a little bit. So I expanded my range all the way to the coast of Georgia, to the ocean, all the way to the North Georgia mountains, into the plains of the south. And I've learned a lot. I've learned that the land in the south is way cheaper. It's almost all timber mill, but you can be guaranteed they're hog down there. The coast is nice, but it's still four hours away, and I'm not willing to drive that far, but that land is also a little more expensive than around here. North Georgia mountains are beautiful. Love getting up in the morning and looking across the mountain range. But my lease right now has hills on it, and I don't like dragging deer on those hills. I can't imagine dragging up and down uh, mountain range, big slopes every, day, every time I go hunting. So that's really not for me either. Plus that land up there is a little more expensive. So we have some of the best hunting in the state right here, and depending on where you look, some of the best deals. So I'm really glad that I live where I do. So right now, we're just waiting on the phone to ring, see what happens, and I'll keep you updated. So that brings us to the end of the episode. The offer is in and we're waiting on the seller. So next time, we'll either have a counter offer or we'll have an accepted offer, and we'll have to decide what we're gonna do. In the meantime, I've learned something really interesting. This tract of property is the last of 1,500 acres that this seller has been trying to get rid of. So he's highly motivated to finish it up and get it done, and my broker is convinced that we can get this property for around $2,000 an acre, and that's what I'm hoping for. So next time, we'll walk the property one more time, take a look at this extra piece of uh, acreage that comes with it, and see what we have, and we'll either make a decision to pursue this property or move on to something else. So thanks for joining us on Southern Hunter. Remember to look us up on the web, and don't forget my other dream, hunting with Ted Nugent, playing guitar with Eric Clapton. So if you see either of those guys, let them know for me. We'll see you next time. Or sometimes I even do yoga. I want to take good care of that buck and see my camera shot. Thank God. Uh, so my broker's talk. So that's where we're going to go next time. Thanks for joining me on Southern Hunter. And remember, if you see Eric Clapton or Ted Nugent, God, bless America. If it doesn't work out, we'll keep looking. But that's what we'll do next time. So remember my other dream? If you see... But in the meantime, I've learned something really interesting, that there's an airplane up there, and I'm going to hear that. So that brings us to, to the end of the episode today. So that brings us to the end of the episode today. Our offer is in and we're waiting on the buyer. No, we're waiting on the seller. I'm the buyer. So that brings us to the end of the episode today. We're waiting on the seller. Offer is in. So now we just have to sit and wait and decide what they're going to do. No, we're not deciding. They're deciding. So that brings us to the end of the episode. The offer is in. We're now waiting on the seller to determine...